Hi, this is Ginger Cook. Today we're going to cover how to use glazing medium. Now Liquitex makes a glazing medium as do other uh, acrylic companies. We're just going to cover how to use this particular type of glazing medium. And to demonstrate that I've created a painting with some river rocks. Some are above the water and some are below the water and how we get this effect. And a lot of times people will ask me, well, what, what's glazing? What is it? Well, if you imagine coffee uh, spilled on a white shirt, uh, that would be kind of the effect of glazing. Glazing is where you take a very thin uh, bit of color, probably often mixed with water with no white in it, and cover it over a slightly lighter color, and um, it will change the color underneath. Just like, say, coffee or tea will stain a shirt. In this live stream video uh, last week, um, I went ahead and demonstrated how to use uh, just water to get this effect. But sometimes you want the glaze so thin that you can't use water. And the reason being is that because it will not adhere to the canvas. If you get it too th it thin, there's not enough uh, molecules left in the paint to grab to the paint underneath it. So you, this is when you want a new glazing medium. I probably didn't use more than then two or three teaspoons in the whole painting. Of course, this is little, so you might want to find a smaller bottle. I've had this forever. I really like it, though, kind of the Liquitex glazing medium. If you didn't have any, what else could you use? You could use um, Liquitex, um, you know, maybe just a gloss medium and varnish would work as a glazing medium, too. All right, so if you didn't have that, you don't have to go out and buy something. You could probably use that. Now before we get started here, I want to bring your attention very quickly to two things. Um, one, I didn't paint this picture in a vacuum. Um, I, this just didn't, I didn't make this up out of my head. There's a wonderful site on the internet called Paint My Photo, and as artists you're welcome to join it. And photographers from around the world offer their photographs, uh, and they don't I'll, uh, have a copyright on it if you're going to make a painting of it, but what they do ask is you give them a little credit for the photo. And this lovely gal by the name of Robin Lovelock painted a very, or rather she photographed a beautiful uh, photograph of a river and some trees and everything. It was called the River Somewhere Number 2. And I took just a tiny little bit of her a photograph and sort of blew it up in my mind and created this these ri river rocks above and below the water for you but anyway that was paint my photo Robin Lovelock and I'll put the link below if you want to find out how to join paint my photo it's a great resource for artists and there's just gosh I think they have like 10,000 photographs on there and they just ask that uh, you you know if you're gonna do that that you make sure that you credit the photographer the second thing I want to mention is that um, Besides having this release today, which is going to take about an hour to do, including the introduction, next week I'm going to release, next Friday on July 17th, this painting called Pansy Garden. And it's on an 8x8 canvas and it's a gallery wrap, pretty deep. And I've painted all the way around the edges. You see this almost like a picture frame. And this is in conjunction with a new thing that's happening on YouTube in a week called Love Summer Art. And you'll notice there's a hashtag there. And what's happened is my daughter, the Art Sherpa, has invited, oh gosh, 200 or so artists from um, YouTube to come play and put this hashtag in their title. All these wonderful videos on how to, everything from how to uh, scrapbook to how to uh, paint oils, watercolors, ac acrylics, uh, how to make jewelry, any kind of craft or art project is going to be uh, featured and uh, with this hashtag in the title and you as a viewer are going to love it and one of the things that we think would be just absolutely nifty is that um, you when you search for this just go up to the, um, the bar above the video here and put that in the search it part and on the 17th and look at how many artists that you're going to find creating for you that you didn't even know were there. It is going to be like an art crawl or an art extravaganza, gosh, extravaganza, really terrific. So that's going to be released July 17th. I wanted to show you that and just put the plug in for that. And oh, again, we always say that it's nice to um, know that some of your favorite artists are going to be involved. Uh, 
You, some of you, if you're watching me, you've probably uh, seen Clive Art in Wales. He's going to be there. Uh, Secret Soto, if you're into uh, uh, scrapbooking and so forth, she's going to be there. Um, just probably more artists than you can believe. So don't forget, hashtag love summer art next July 17th. All right, so continuing on with this, I'm going to show you how we're going to paint these rocks in a river, okay, with some of them underwater and some of them above ground. And I want to again thank our um, Robin Lovelock for the uh, generous uh, photo that she posted on uh, Paint My Photo. So let's continue on and I'll show you how to do this painting. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken some ultramarine blue, some burnt umber, and some dodgenean purple, and I combined the three colors and did the bottom. And I put a little bit, while well, my brush is still dirty, a little bit of ultramarine blue up here, and then I dried it. I don't think you need to see me paint this in, but we're going to start with this. All right, because when you're talking about a river, what you've got to be able to do is start with the riverbed. You've got to be able to play, have a place where the rocks are. Now, in this particular scene, we're going to have some rocks above and below the water, but I'm going to use probably a light brown chalk here. So I'm going to say that uh, right, right in, um, let's just say right here, I'm going to make a rock, kind of a nice big rock that's above the water like this. That rock's going to be above the water and maybe there's going to be a one here. And I'm doing it in brown so I can kind of know the difference between my rocks that are above the water and ones that aren't, okay? Maybe I've got one coming out of here. Now as I go back um, up here, I'm going to say that there's some smaller rocks. Remember, things get smaller as they go back in the distance and see these are more oval and they're kind of overlapping in be groups of three and seven, five, odd numbers. Then um, we're going to say the river's here. and Maybe you've got a little rock off here like this coming down. And um, we we'll say that that's going to be the river. Here's some little rocks this way. Okay? So this is just a very simple explanation of what that's going to be. Now, what I want to do here is using now that you've seen it, maybe I'll just kind of, I'm going to just take my lighter chalk here and outline the big, the few big ones, all right? I'm not really thinking you're seeing those, so I'm just going to do it again. I was having a little trouble seeing them. Um, I probably wouldn't have to do, I could probably just do this with a brush without even chalking them in, but if I couldn't, that's how I would do it, if I wasn't sure about it, right? Those are the, these are going to be the, Please notice these are above the water, so they've got to have a flat bottom, okay? The bottoms have to be flat, flat, okay? Now the other rocks we're going to do are below the water, so I'm doing these sort of oval ones. They're um, kind of uh, below, the, see they're not going up like little pyramids. And we're going to say that these are below the water. They can be in different shapes, probably some sort of sh sh shale. Now keep some small ones in here. Sometimes there's small ones. You're talking about a river. Sometimes there's these little tiny rocks too. And honestly, I don't th th think that you'd have to draw every one in. But if you do, it's okay. Don't panic. It's just a painting. And I'm just going to show you how you're going to suggest that some rocks are above and below of the water. And this is, I love it. You know, sometimes you'll see someone, they'll put a fisherman on the bank and they'll do this real elaborate river. Um, uh, I don't know how elaborate we're going to make this, but you kind of get the idea. Now, all right, and then back up in here, again, I'm going to want some smaller ones, and they're getting more narrow, so maybe I'll just sort of fill these in with chalk now so you can tell the difference between the ones I'm saying are under the water and the ones that aren't, and I don't know how much of these you'd see. You don't have to have every rock that ever was in the river, but okay, something like that. Now, what you want to do is uh, take some white paint and make, maybe I think I will do, I want a very, very light color. So probably I'm going to take some white paint, maybe, and let's see, what could I put on here? Because I want to glaze over this. So I could just do white, but I don't want to do that. I think I'm going to take white 
and a little Australian Sienna. Or rather, no, I think I want yellow oxide. Let's do that. Though I will do, we'll put some Australian Sienna out in a little bit. And this is going to be a small brush, 99% white, 98% maybe even. And um, it's going to be white, a white brush, a little tiny bit of yellow oxide in it, and a little tiny bit of dazzling purple, like next to nothing. So I've got this sort of off-white, purpley gray color. Does that make sense? Now I'm going to just come in here like this and um, just uh, paint these in very easily here. I'm just going to come in here like this. This isn't tricky. One bunch of paint here like that. Just I mean you can see once I get it going I want to make sure that I've left plenty of, of, of uh, river. It's some of the directions, you know, some of them may be kind of kind of angling that way. Mostly I've got them going kind of level. Okay, these are sort of the round river stones, so I'm not trying to do any hard edges. And I'm suggesting that they're under the water. Maybe some bigger ones toward the front. Don't forget to put some kind of coming off your canvas. Um, there you would definitely have some. Alright, so you can kind of get the idea. Now you have to give everything a coat of something. That's just it. It's going over the dark. The dark part is going to be our bottom of our river. Now in this example, could we have put some more stones in? Yeah, probably sure. But this is what we're going to do too. And again, we want to make sure you've got some running off the edge of the canvas. And then back here, I'm just going to cover right over those little bits of chalk I did. Just paint right over it. I love chalk. You can just, these are new pastels about a dollar a stick but you get a little medicine bottle a recycled one and you can put your little broken pieces in that and then you always have some chalk now now these these rocks are sticking up and you notice the shape has changed a little bit okay but I don't want to deal with those right now I don't want to confuse you we're just going to talk about the ones that are under the water all right we're just about the ones that are under the water okay Let's make an S pattern. What do you say we get an S pattern going? And we'll do that by deciding on how light or dark we make something, all right? It's a rock like that. Okay, so here's our rocks. I know this sounds pretty easy. Now I'm going to pause this and drive the video, okay? All right, so what we want to have happen is in order to make these rocks sink, is basically we're going to put them under the water. We're going to do something called glazing. And I did that because I remember if you got a chance to watch the river fish that I did, I mean, I'm going to mention this again, um, this was our river fish. If you got a chance to watch that, you saw how I did that, put them underwater. But I'm going to show you kind of, this is more of just what you might find in a typical stream. So I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna like this and I'm going to spray it with a little water like this, okay? Just like that. And I think on some of these, I'm just going to come over with the burnt sienna and water and I'm going to stain back some of these rocks. Now the thing about river rocks is they're not all the same color. You'd agree with me. So, you know that's the wonderful thing about river rocks. They are not all the same color. So maybe I want some of those that color. Maybe I'll take a little Australian sienna which is like a, if you don't have that it's like azo gold and I'm going to change the color now. This has got more of a a gold yellow cast to it. It's a translucent color. Liquitex uh, makes a translucent color. Let me just stop this video here. Um, I'm going to stop this right now. Forgot to turn the phone off. So maybe I will just see who's calling for a minute. Hang on a second while I'm doing this. This is a fun thing. Hang on. I'm going to pause and see. Okay, so we have gone ahead and there's our, this is our Australian sea and I'm going to put that on some of these. Remember we're using a little water. I don't have to do it on all of them, but okay, you get the idea. We're going to stain these with something. And maybe I'll stain a few. Because really it's like tea or coffee staining a shirt. There's no white involved in this. Here's a little ultramarine blue. And I might put a little ultramarine blue over some of these and have them be slightly different than the other. Maybe sort of a half and half thing here. 
uh, if I do a little bit of ultramarine blue while this is still wet over some of these colors, it's going to act differently than if I didn't. All right. So here, got a little ultramarine blue over some of these. Okay. Ooh, that's a little dark. But you don't want to see all the river stones the same, okay? So, all right. Now, what if I took a little bit of ultramarine blue now and just came along the edge of some of these and said that they had a little bit of a shadow? Still wet. I haven't dried anything, but just the front edge, okay? I'm just, just suggesting that maybe that could be. Maybe I'll put a little bit of burnt umber with it. And I want a little bit darker edge on the front of some of these river stones. Now, because look, they're underwater, but they still have a little edge where they're touching the, um, you know, the, the floor of the river. Okay. All right. So you can kind of see how we did that. We've put this, these little dark shadows under here and already we've kind of sunk them a little bit, not completely, but we've got them sunk a little bit. Okay. Now, at this at this point, let's just make let's work on these a little bit. Let's just take a little bit of um, burnt sienna now and, and just paint this rock in here. This was our little tall rock, remember that was sticking out of the water. So I'm just going to paint that burnt sienna. I'm going to paint this one burnt sienna for the ease of kind of trying to explain this. There we go. These were kind of round ones, and they're sticking up, and and they're flat on the bottom. So the mine says, okay, these are sticking up. Remember, I think we said this one was too. This little rock over here on the right was sticking up. Okay. And let's see, where else did we have a rock that was sticking up? We had a couple. Um, did I have any? I had this one sticking up. And um, I think I have one sticking up back here off the canvas like this. And maybe, oh yeah, these were. I remember these were kind of sticking up. I want to put a little white with these. I want these a little lighter. So a little burnt sienna, a little bit of white. I'm going to say that these are sticking up, kind of round at the top of these, where the, maybe the river, remember you got to keep the bottom flat if you're going to do stuff like this. Don't make them all the same size, please. You know, there's a tendency to make every rock the same. Try not to do that. They are certainly not the same. There's a, sim, they're similar in a river like this, but they're not the same. You can say that there's some sticking up down here on the edge. Maybe a couple little ones like that. Okay, so now these river, these rocks are sticking up. These other ones are not. So if they're not, we're gonna just glaze back these. And I think we're gonna we're gonna say these are way under the water here. I think I'm just gonna take some uh, burnt umber and a little bit of water, a little bit of water and burnt umber like this, and just glaze these other ones. These ones that are kind of far away. Gonna glaze these over kind of brown at first. Just like that. I'm just going to say that these ones are darker. Cut not so red. They're farther away. All right. Now, at this point, you know, you can sit there and say, well, what are we going to do now? All right. So I've sort of got some rocks. I sort of feel like, I don't know that um, I feel like these rocks are up on, you know, up high yet. So what you want to do is take a little bit of white and yellow oxide like that on your brush. And I'm going to say that the flat part, the top part of this rock is um, is lighter, okay? And if I tap this on, I could have dried it, but if I tap it on like this, and kind of make a little shelf area, um, that would be one way to make it look like it's lighter. And then it, how about here, the top of this rock? And then I want to just wipe my brush off, and while this is still wet, tap this edge out and just make it disappear, okay? See how that edge just sort of disappears? Kind of see the trick on that. Let me zoom in. This is an important trick to learn. Um, I'm going to zoom in like about like there. All right. Now I'm going to show you on this one. Here's some light, whiter color right up here like this. Now I want it, I want this and this to melt. So I'm going to pinch my brush off on a rag and just tap in this edge till it disappears. I don't. Okay. Just, just like that, okay? So so that way, um, and then this brush is a little big for that. This rock has to have a hard edge on top. That means it has to have an almost like an outline in white. It's going to be really light up here, and this rock's probably a little bit big to do that with, but um, 
maybe it's touching this one a little bit like that. So I'm going to say these rocks are a little bigger. And this one is a little bit lighter up here. And as I come down on the side of this rock, um, what I want to do is I want to come down on the side of this rock here. And uh, I'm going to get a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of um, dazzling purple. And I want a little bit more of a shadow on this side of the rock here, like this, a little darker. And I'm going to pinch the brush. And then I'm just going to tap in this edge because you know we don't want it like two toned like a tie. Okay, so tap in that edge, and the same thing here. Let's just tap in this edge for now. All right, so that's a that's a lighter rock. Now we're saying that that rock, um, that rock is um, above the water because why? Because we've made it a little bit lighter up on top, and we've changed the shape of it. This is as simple as that. And let me see if I can't get my picture here. Okay, now we've got more to paint with these rocks, but you're getting the idea. So here's, what if this rock were a little lighter here? Up here, maybe a little burnt sienna and white for now. And then the same thing with these back here. They're going to be lighter on the top. That says that they're sticking out of the water. Where my other rocks are not. I'm going to say that they're a little bit lighter. Um, one a little bit lighter. This brush is a little big for this. Let's, um, this would be far easier if you were doing a bigger painting. We're doing this kind of small. This is six by eight, but it just it's so easy for me to film this size. And the principle is the same whether we're doing this huge or small, except it takes a little bit more of an effort to get a small one done than if we were doing it big. Trust me, a bigger painting is actually, it takes longer, but it's easier to do in some ways because you need less de little de less dexterity. All right, now remember, we said that this was the top of these rocks here, so we're lightening these up. Lightening these up, same here. This one's going off the canvas here like this, some sort of rock that'll lighten the top of this one. See, it's going off. All right, so now you see, you see, you zoom back out. All right, so now you're starting to see some rocks. Now, we haven't done much of anything. I want you to see how we're developing these rocks. These, it definitely says, are swimming kind of above the water here. And one thing I want to do is make sure I have some good, sharp, hard edges. So I'm going to take a little bit of our background color, which was purple, and um, dot an ultramarine blue, and make sure I don't have any white on the brush. And I want to make a hard edge on the front of this rock and maybe maybe even take a chip out of it and make sure that I have a hard edge here underneath here like this where this rock is sitting. See that? I want to make sure that that's a hard rock, edge on the rock. I'm going to fix my... I'm looking at a wonderful photograph of some rocks. What I have to do is just keep my iPad on a little longer. I found some beautiful rocks. I'll tell you about it at the end in the credits on the uh, Paint My Photo. And I just zoomed in on a few little river rocks, and that's how I'm able to come up with this scenario. It's like a little tiny bit of a great big photograph I'm showing you how to do. And um, I'm going to lock the rotation. Yeah. And let's see. Uh, auto lock. I want to put this on never. All right. So now we're going to go back to our photograph so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm not going to show you the photograph because I don't even have a way to print it out. However... Trust me, that's where I'm finding this reference. I'm not just coming with this out of the top of my head. And if I was better at computers, I was good at computers as I, as I am at um, uh, painting, probably could have printed this out. But all right, so now you, you've got, there's my dark under here. I'm going to make sure that these edges are flat under these rocks. The rocks I'm saying are sticking up. I want to make sure that the it's flat on the bottom. Make, don't, oh gosh, make darn sure that that's happened, okay? Now already you can kind of see we've got some, we've got some different colors. Now this has had a chance to dry, but you know, maybe, you know, not that you can't glaze other rocks. It's a, it's sort of an interesting trick. I'm going to, I've just put a little water on my brush and just tapped over this and said that maybe this little section right here is a little bit darker, or maybe right here. This is just this sort of purple-blue color with water on the um, 
on the brush and you see I'm saying the lights come in from this way so I can say that these these rocks here now what you may not have thought about but I'm going to let you think about it now is that when rocks are wet if they're re they act like a little bit like a mirror and they're reflecting the sky so chances are that this rock here even though it's sticking up we're glazing over this a little bit it's it's just reflecting the sky and I think just a picture like this is very pretty my niece Kim uh, sent me years ago some really nice pictures of some rocks she took up in Lake Tahoe of really pretty rocks and um, I meant to ask her about those because that computer died that had them and I gotta get her to resend me those I'm gonna put some a little of this dark blue shadow under here too even on these okay on the edges of this and same here I want to make sure that I've got a dark edge on these these rocks here on the just on the edge of them even though they're going to be underwater I want to make sure I've got a pretty good dark edge on these okay so now this is fun I mean we haven't done anything too clever what we have to do now is give everything a fast dry so I'm going to pause we're going to dry for me something about rocks that I particularly like is that I think sometimes they get a little green looking so I'm going to take some yellow oxide and some ultramarine blue mostly yellow oxide a little ultramarine blue and I'm going to make sort of this sort of greenish color and wipe it off on my brush and what I want to do is add a little bit of green just tap some green on let's see, let's see where that hair dryer go okay just tap, tap some green on some of these just almost like a glaze just barely I'm going to say that there's a little green on some of these rocks particularly up here in the front some of these rocks are going to have a little bit of a green cast to them and because I think they would all right I don't, honestly I think that they, they would have some and then you know it's just hard to tell in the picture it's sort of small but I'm going to say that that little part of the rock is going to be green here I, you want to make sure it's just not solid paint. This is my. This is still kind of a green glaze here. This sort of olive green color, and it's not on all of them. I just want to put it on a few in a few places on some of the rocks. That's the trick, and I don't want it on too much. But again, color is sort of my thing. You may, may have noticed. It probably won't do much to the blue rocks, but on some of these lighter ones, I'm going to say that the ones that are going to be under the water, I'm just going to cast a little bit of green on here like that all right so I kind of like that and now very nicely we're gonna say this is under the water it's a little green cast now let's take a little bit of transparent mixing white someone asked me today what that was and that is a, um, a, a white you can see through made by Liquitex and it's half zinc half titanium but you could use zinc which is also a good transparent white as opposed to titanium which is like a door titanium white you can't see through and mixing white you can so now as we glaze over some of these the easiest thing for me to do is to put a few little dots of this white on top of here I'm just sort of dotting it where it might be and I it's very transparent maybe I've got a little bit of some sort of light around the edges here just gonna um, we're gonna just see how I'm putting a few little dots here like that on these river rocks and then maybe I'll even imply little stones by just using the mixing white and imply a few little stones in here in some of these other areas because you know rivers are never just a few big bolt rocks there are always some little tiny things in here too so okay so I'm going to do that and just just a few little it's just almost like a pattern. I'm not trying to get a real detailed pattern I mean honestly we could make this big and make a big 4860 painting and just do detailed patterns of rocks and trust me it would be very pretty and I think I said this rock was coming out of the water so I think I'm going to make that one a little lighter up here and the same thing as long as I've got this mixing white out I'm going to just lighten up the top of these rocks 
right when they're coming out of the water. And it's not like you're using titanium because titanium, this allows some of the other rock color to show through. That's what I love about the transparent mixing white. And don't be afraid when you're doing a rock to imagine that there's there's planes on it. It's not just one kind of jelly bean thing here. It's got got maybe some little cracks and crevices where some of the uh, rock has different levels, heights, and ele you know elevated heights. How's that? Like a like what? Well, like like a like an apartment building. Okay, try to think of that. Little elevated heights here on this rock. And let's see. We said that some of these were sticking out of the water. So now we're going to take a little of that mixing white and do that. And I, you know, I'm starting to do this as a simple tr tip, but I, I can see that this is taking way too long to be a simple tick. This, uh, tip. This has to be a, you know, a, a whole little rock tutorial here at this point. I really did want to make this a, a, you know, kind of a neat little tip and trick thing here. All right, so you can see I'm saying those rocks are out of the water, but these ones underneath are not, even if we have some different heights to them. Okay, I'm going to just say that there's some different kind of, and I've changed the shape. That also kind of fixes it too, okay? So these are not. All right, so those were sticking up. Those were not. Um, let's make a really dark color. We know how to make that. That's your... Uh, ultramarine blue and burnt umber and I want again to come to you in this rock in here and put a few little dark crevices in a couple of these places they're not all the same all right something like that all right so I'm saying that that happened and let's see where's a little bit of burnt sienna maybe I want a little bit more reddish brown here too there we go all right so we're saying this rock is here and I want a little light rock underneath next to it like this this is going to be under the water, another little cup, kind of little light rock next to it like that. Okay, so how are we going to say that this rock is above and this rock isn't? Well, let's dry it. We're going to pause and dry everything and I'll show you our great trick. Okay. Now, I think what I want to have happen next is um, I've got my rocks here, and I kind of like them. I mean, they're a little bit brighter. Um, if I got another plate, maybe just another little plate, and I'm going to show you another. Here's some glazing medium again. I just need a clean plate. Another little teaspoon or so, maybe less than, less than that. A clean brush. And I want a little bit of... Um, Burnt sea. Uh, let's try some um, Australian sienna this time. A little Australian sienna, and I'm going to just put a little on. That's a little yellow. Do you see that? Let's try a little burnt sienna. All right, so there's that. Now, what if I said, we can try it. What if I said that here was the top of this rock now? Just going to glaze over the top of that rock like this with this nice thin coat. Still a nice rock here. We haven't changed anything. I'm just sort of toned these back a bit. We turned out the lights a little bit on them. 
like that. Okay, so I sort of tone these rocks back. Now they're all too much the same, so I might just take it here and maybe wipe off a bit. Okay, might wipe off a bit. And um, what do I want to have happen here? Um, what would happen if I had any of this going over here? Now we dried it, so this is the same glazing medium. I can change the colors of the rocks even again by adding a little of that color on top if I wanted to just sort of turn off the lights. But I want to turn on some lights now, so I'm going to go back into my um, mixing white. I'm going to just barely touch it. Probably should have dried this, but I'm just not going to take the time. I need this right where I can see it. Tap it off on a paper towel. Never. I always use a rag and I'm always tapping it off. Alright, so I want this a little bit lighter up here in a few places on this rock. Just tap this on here. A little bit right up here on the, just a little bit lighter up here, right over this glaze. A little bit lighter on those rocks. You see, I'm kind of, what I want to do is sort of say that happened. And then, what happened to this rock over here? We don't, I don't know. I have to put that one in again. But, you know, I could, if it, Maybe just tap a little bit of light in a few places, okay? In the river, I could still tap in. This is the mixing light. It's transparent, so I could tap in a little bit of light somewhere on these rocks if I wanted to show up. Like, for instance, right here, maybe I want the top edge of this rock to show a little bit. See, it's still under the water. You see how I'm doing that, right? This is the transparent mixing light. I'm just tapping that over this rock like that. Barely touch it. And I think I still want the edge of this white. Put it on and tap it off. I want this a little lighter right here. See? So, so I've got a little bit of leeway here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest there's a little stream. And how I'm going to suggest that is I'm going to suggest that there's some water. This is still mixing white. Okay. I'm going to suggest my water in my stream. And I'm going to start suggesting using it kind of back and forth like this, I'm going to tap on a little bit of a current of the river. Maybe it's kind of floating around here, these rocks, like that, see? And I'm going to say that this is sort of floating next to these rocks. And here's a little bit of a current, keeping it this way, a little bit of mixing white, wipe off most of it. I'm going to say that down in here, down in here, let me just get this plate out of the way where I can use it. Say that all down in here, I'm going to say that there's a river current that's coming this way, keeping it sideways. This is kind of cool, isn't it? There's where my river is sort of running out. Tap a little bit of this transparent white on here. Round these rocks. See, that's going to kind of bury them in the river. Do you see how, my, see how I've done that? And maybe I'm going to say that over in here, just looking at our picture here, where do I need a little bit of color? I need something to happen over here, so I'm just going to say that maybe in this area where I wasn't too busy putting rocks, put a little current, all right? And again, transparent mixing white, kind of this way, keeping, keep it level, zigzag it and keep it level. Barely touching this. I'm going to say that there's some water around here and maybe up in here too. It just, I could have put a bank here. You know, that would have been something I could have done. Put a bank here, but I'm just saying that that's my river. There's my river. And the main center of interest is this big rock right here and the current that's running along here, like this. We're still in the mixing white, but I'm just putting on a little bit thicker than right next to this rock here. These are our main rocks. Okay, I'm just going to say that there's some light coming next to these like this. Okay, see how we're just saying that that's, this is a river? Now, I the rest of this is all clear. We're not saying anything happened here. I don't want to bring white all the way back in here. I don't want to do any of that. Um, I can say that there's some current back this way that's just sort of leading off into nothing like that. And let's see, where else could we put a little bit? Uh, but really, you've got to be kind of careful. We don't, the thing is, when you're looking at a photograph, you can't go where the photograph has the light because you may not want that as an artist. 
Okay, so I'm going to say there's a little bit of light back there. And let's bring a little bit of this current around like this. Say that this came out this way. Just a little bit here. Next to this rock. Okay, so there's our, that's our current. And we're going to make a path. We're going to say that it followed the river this way around these rocks. Maybe came up off to the side here. These are the ones sticking out of the water. Now, okay, see see where I'm going with this? I think I need to bring this light all the way off, like this. And um, part of me thinks this corner up here is kind of <laughs> there's not much going on in this corner. Um. I don't know that I want a lot of stuff going on in that corner up here. I have to think about that for a minute because I'm kind of making up this painting as I'm teaching it to you. I'm thinking about this. What could I do with this corner? Um, a little bit of white maybe back up in here. A little bit. Not much. Where the, There's our river. Um, I think I'm going to just say this is the river here and not talk too much about it. Let's see what happens if I do that. And If I don't like it, we'll change it. This is a good thing to learn. So what are we going to do here? I'm going to say that there's some river here. And I'm just not going to talk about it. Way back in here. Yeah, that's pretty good. The transparent mixing white is, is, is translucent enough where it allows me to suggest there's some light on this river without um, making too big a deal out of where the current is. Okay, so we're going to say that there's our current in our water like this. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the titanium and I'm going to come up here with the titanium. I want you to see how much brighter the titanium is. And I'm going to come up here in a few places with the brush and say, there's the titanium. The titanium is so much brighter than the mixing white that you can just really, it brings your eye right to the front. And we'll just do a few little drops of it back here in a few places with our, with our river. And that's... Um, Make sure I've got this right next to the rock. Now I'm going to dry this one more time and see what else we need to do to uh, to solidify our river rocks. Okay, so let's just look at that. But you can kind of get an idea of how I've decided that this is our river and what we're going to be doing with it. I think I'm going to glaze back some of this water here with the mixing white, but I have to I have to dry it first. All right, so that's our plan. Let's dry it. Okay, so I think we're still going here. Uh, taking a little tiny brush, and I wanted to make sure I had a hard edge here on the rock, and just I couldn't quite get that with the with that big one. This is titanium white. And I want to make sure that I have, um, you know, some white around some of these rocks, maybe here. Here's a, just a little bit here, just a little tiny bit. If it's too much, you know where the glazing stuff is. You can fix it. See, right around that rock. You see how that kind of pushed that rock in there? And I'm not going to talk too much about this back in here for now. I don't want to do that. But let's take a little bit of Dosnine Purple. Make sure I have a real dark edge next to this white here where I did it around the rock here. So that's a dark edge. I want a dark edge on some of these rocks. Right up in here, it's the darkest, that's purple. It's as dark as I can make it. Right up in here like that, see? So there, that sort of solidified those. And here, where these rocks are, see where this edge is and this edge? We've got, you, you, you know, you've got this sort of thing where wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So. You're saying that this is a dark edge here, then maybe we need to add a little bit of light on this edge of this rock, just a bit. I'm going to say maybe this is a little Australian sienna and a little bit of white. Kind of lighten up that rock. Now I'm doing, what I'm doing is turning on the lights, okay? These are our three main rocks. I did have a rock over here that was sticking up out of water, and I think I'm going to put that one back because I think that's a nice uh, touch to it, and I can always add it. And we put it in here in the beginning. But here's this this rock right here that's sticking up out of water just all by itself. See? And I think that that's um, 
kind of nice and I might take a little brush and um, kind of blend those little uh, edges together like this. Take a little more white, just come up here like this. Up and down like this. There we go on this rock. But if I have that, now I've got to have, I've got to show you, I'm going to take a little bit of phthalo blue and white, mixing white maybe, a little ultramarine blue. Because I've got to have something kind of light under here for this to work. This this doesn't work. This doesn't work under here unless I have a little bit of light color coming. Let's see if I can make that happen. Um, let me just dry that for a minute because that's not... Okay, now I want to come back over here. Here's my dark rock right here. There's the dark part of this bottom of this rock. And I want to say that there's some sort of light, light underneath it. And see, just by having this little tiny bit of light underneath it, that allowed me to make that rock look like it was above ground, so to speak. A little bit higher. And uh, I'm going to take a little bit of the transparent mixing white come up a little bit on top with this. Say that there's this rock. It's a little higher. So that one's out of the water. All right. I don't want to say that there's any more water in here. Maybe there's a little bit of water. Here's some mixing white. Maybe right next to this rock here, there's a little bit of the mixing white here. We're going to say there's a little current. See that? Just see how I did that? Right, right there. A little bit of current, current right there. And is there anywhere else I want to put that? The transparent mixing white I really like for that, okay? And because this is sort of, you can get the rocks, everything's sort of flowing around here like this, kind of in a little sh S shape. That, okay? So I'm adding a little current. Uh, less being more, I guess we could kind of stop. The whole idea was this, was to show you how to paint rocks underwater and how to have some look like they were showing up. And here, I want this dark edge of this rock here. Um, I either have to have a dark or a light edge of this rock. So let's put, let's take a little purple and say that this rock right here, right where this is, there. See, now you see that rock. There's a little bit, of, there's still some white. But again, I put the dark there because I had two light edges. All right, does this make sense? Why, why would you do that? Maybe like right in between here, I'm going to say that there's a separation between these two rocks, just with a little brush, and I can separate them. But then maybe over here, um, I want I want to say that there's a little light coming up. This has got a little purple on the brush, so when I put the mixing white with it, this is pretty tame. But there, there it is. It's a little bit of current right there. And then that's all I have to do, and if we were making a bigger painting, than this. Maybe we would do some more details. But I would say this is a very good example of how to take um, how to take rocks and make them look like they were underwater. Now part of me wants this rock up here to be a little lighter. So I'm going to just show you a few little tricks on that because just because you glazed it once doesn't mean you can't do it again. Let's just say, let's just say we want a light pattern that's going to follow us, right? So I want the top of this rock to be lighter but not stick out of the water. If I make it too light, it's going to look like it's sticking out of the water. So I'm going to do a little light. Let's put this brush away. I'm going to do something a little tricky light path on it. Just in a couple places. I'm going to just say that there's some light again. And just in a couple places. Nothing too scary. Okay. I'm just, I just want the light to be going this way. All right. Still want the top of this light rock to be lighter. Right there, this little one, okay, on the right. Now, I could have left this alone, just like this, and said that that's what happened. But what I'm going to do is dry it and glaze over it one more time and push it back under, but it'll still be light. And I'll use that phthalo. Um, I think I won't use the phthalo. I think I will use the burnt sienna glaze. I'm going to dry that really close. Just these two. Just those two, okay? 
So then, if I take a little bit of glazing liquid, I think we had that plate back again, a little tiny bit of glazing liquid, like a drop, and a little tiny bit of burnt sienna, um, and mix it in there with these like this. Just mix it in like that. Just make sure that you've got it all mixed in there. Now, I want to go over this rock like this with a little bit of this color. See that? Now, it pushed it under the water. It did, didn't it? Pushed it under, still pushed it under the water. It might be closer to the surface than some of these others just by changing the color. See? Might be a little closer to the surface. If I wanted it less of that and more of the thalo, okay? So if I wanted it more thalo, for instance, I could put ooh, too much. If I wanted to bury a little bit, I would have put a little bit of the thalo on top of it, just a tiny little bit. And that would have pushed it back just a hair, pushed that rock under the surface. And I can do the same thing with some of this white. You can take the glazing liquid, and I would probably use ultramarine blue. Now I'm going to show you this last trick. Glazing liquid, another little teaspoon of it somewhere, and a little ultramarine blue like that. Just n nothing. Okay. Now if you've got too much white here, what you can do is that you can push a little of the white back with some glazing liquid if you've got it too bright. And so that's, that's another little trick. You can use the glazing liquid in a couple of places. If I thought this was a little much there, we just put a little of the glazing liquid over that and with, ult with ultramarine blue and push that back. And again, there's my light source coming forward. And as I kind of look at the rocks, I mean, I really kind of like this picture. It's just really kind of fun when I look at that and I'm saying, well, what do I want here? Again, we're either turning on or off the lights. That's all we're doing. That's all we're saying happen. We're turning on and off the lights. And again, I want a little bit brighter water coming this way around this rock. Like this. But this is the current in the water going back and forth, very gently, barely touching that. I can look and say that that feels like my river to me. All of this feels like my river. Like this. And as an artist, what I have to do is just look at this and see... Does this feel rivery or not? It kind of does to me. I don't know if it does to you, but it does to me. So again, we're just going to say here's a little bit of, this is the titanium now. We've stopped with the mixing white and making this a little bit wider. And there's our, there's our river. Let's just bring this off like that. Okay, there's our river. Here's our current. Here's our shallow rocks. Kind of a close-up of our river. And I think that's kind of a cool picture, and I hope you enjoyed it. And um, anyway, that's how you use glazing medium and um, to, to, to bury rocks or if you need to do thin glazes where it's too thin for water. Um, you know, if you just want to use water, sometimes water won't adhere, but this absolutely will. So that is the trick. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit on this. Like that. And let you really kind of see what we've got going here. And I'm going to take a little bit of that glazing liquid Let's see, what do I have left? Anything? No, what do I have right in here? Just pull a little brown right there. Okay, see, I mean, this is this is what you could do. You can look at this. You know me, I'll just sit there and say, I think I'm done. Part of me wants to just stop here and have some more rocks under the water. Right in here. When I'm looking at that, I want more rocks under the water there, or I need more water. So. For now, I'm going to do more water because I don't want to fool around with rocks under the water. So I'm going to say that there's a little more current going here around these rocks, okay? But part of me kind of wanted some uh, water there, too. But, but big part of me said that would have been nice. It's just the titanium, okay, around that rock like that. Okay, so that works. That works, too. We could have buried some more rocks, but, you know, you can get too much of that stuff, too. So here we go. Here's a little river current. Here's a few little rocks, and um, that's it. We're gonna hope you enjoyed it. If this was fun, and this is going to be, um, I think, a marvelous uh, tutorial on rocks. Let's see, we're right at uh, you know an hour, and I hope you don't mind that it took that long. Um, I don't know what all these little white specks are here. I think it's where I've um, something sort of chipped up on me. Um, 
I want to talk to you guys about two things. Uh, I'm thinking about releasing this this Friday. This is my big plan to YouTube. There's River Rocks. I want to release this to you. I'm just going to glaze back over those little specks. And um, if that's the case, since I'm going to be doing that, here, I'm going to write over those little specks there. Glaze right over there. So, okay. Um, get this out of the way so I can push this up where you can see it. Okay, there's our, there's our River Rocks. Um, what I'm going to suggest is this, is that you um, look for our new release that's going to be January, or excuse me, it's been a long day, July 19th, no, that's not it, July 17th, that's the date, I'm going to be releasing a painting that's uh, on, on YouTube along with 200 other artists, and it is going, the hashtag is going to be, hashtag is like a tick tic-tac-toe mark, you know, like you play tic-tac-toe, hashtag love summer art, and this is the video, I'm going to be releasing a video on how to do these summer flowers, let me zoom back out, and this is an 8x8 eight eight canvas, and we're going to talk about how to do that, like this, that's interesting, I would like to um, invite you to come watch it, and then just know that if you type that hashtag in, there's going to be some other artists that are also going to be releasing their videos with the same hashtag. Probably over 200 videos are going to show up that week from the 17th to the 20th. It's going to be so exciting. So if you like this video, you know, I hate to just repeat myself, but feel free, feel free, you guys, if you like this video, feel free to, um, to like it, to make nice comments. And um, if you want to... Um, Subscribe, that would be perfectly fine too. Here's a little ultramarine blue, just kind of tone that back right there. That would be just great. See, I'm going to keep the eye into the river here. And uh, I would really um, I appreciate hearing from you. I'm glad you like it. And I do do an online class oh, um, every uh, month. Uh, I have subscribers that have access to a, a recorded lesson library of over 40 uh, videos, plus, uh, gosh four to eight a month, and plus I add a few here on YouTube, so I'm just going to suggest that you might enjoy, uh, you know, subscribing to my uh, gingercooklive.gallery channel, it's like $25 a month for a regular person, and $19.95 a month for seniors, those are really like free art lessons, I mean, at, that, at, those, at, at those rates, and you can quit at any time, and if you like how I teach, I got lots more, and I'd love to see you, so thanks very much for watching.